You're listening to Almond in the Morning, Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. Happy Monday, everybody. And now that I have lured all of the families to listen to the show, kids in the car, mom and dad in the car, whatever, to talk about vaping, I do want to take this opportunity to also teach you a little Russian. Um, do you want to ever know what it's, uh, what, uh, how to say, how do you like them apples in Russian? <laughs> Here, listen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Four more years or six more years of Putin over there. Right. You're welcome. (laughs) You're welcome. All right. So uh, vaping. Those of you with kids in middle school, you probably already have heard about the issue one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And many of you in middle schools and even high schools, for that matter, your kids, if you don't know him, your kids might already know him. His name is Tony Tremelli. He's an awesome guy. He's West County Psychological Associates, WCPASTL.com, or on Facebook at West County Psychological. And Tony, first of all, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for all you're doing in terms of mm-hmm. making this problem, uh, people aware of this. When I was talking to you about this earlier, Denise said she thinks you've you, you, you've been to her school already. I think so. I mean, you? have you been in the? I'm sure you've been around Rockwood. Uh huh. Yes, uh, my daughter goes to Crestview. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I was at Crestview a few years back. My okay. colleague Amy Moss is very okay. involved in the Rockwood. School. Okay. Good. Yeah. But you guys all have it covered either way, and vaping is a is a growing problem, and especially the ability of parents to detect when it's happening, for kids to understand that it's really bad for you, even though it's not considered smoking. The mm-hmm. bottom line is the bottom. You're just going to get cancer. It's going to be cinnamon flavored, basically. That's. <laughs> uh, but it's it's just not good. And Tony, you've been going to schools and talking to not only the students, but also the parents, because I had the uh, privilege of being able to hear you speak to a group of parents at Chaminade that I was uh, where I was, and uh, trying to just get them to understand really the true uh, scope of the problem. That's really my goal. And honestly, up until a few months, I don't think any of us really recognized the extent to which this had really taken a hold um, in our middle schools and high schools. I certainly hadn't. Uh, when I got started getting calls from schools, it was uh, it was an opportunity for me to learn about this this growing problem. Um, and it's not isolated to any particular school. St. Louis does seem to have a higher rate of it going on, um, but it's certainly not a- isolated to St. Louis either. This is a, a growing problem all over the country. And part of it, too, and folks, if you have any uh, questions for Tony, I decided to go ahead and just open up the whole half hour here. So if you have questions or want, uh, have, have something to say about the issue, uh, 969 And part of it, too, uh, Tony, it seems, is it's hard for uh, parents to detect what's going on because the the – process itself the apparati and all the, the 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 cartridges or whatever they are don't look like anything menacing right no they really don't they're pretty innocuous and in particular here what we're talking about this this particular product is the jewel um, there's plenty of different e-cigarettes on the market right now vaporizing devices on the market but the jewel um, is a particular product and that's really seemed to become the e-cigarette of choice for young people And I think that's partly due to the fact that it is so inconspicuous. It is so um, perfectly designed for the young vaper. Um, It looks very much like a a USB drive. Yeah. Um, It plugs into any USB port. um, So you can be charging it on your computer. You can be charging it on your um, wall charger, just about anywhere. Um, There's not much smell to it either. So kids are getting away with it, you know, in their bedrooms, um, in their cars, Gosh, even in the classroom. So it's not. So I've seen people vaping, but they are holding like a big thing. It looks like a pipe type we, of thing, and we call that a mod. Okay, but but the but the cartridge, as you call it, or what is it called again? The the uh, jewel. The jewel. That that's not. You can still have it's. It's a delivery system itself, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. See, that's what's so weird about it is, is, is you can just plug it in, and then you, and it's not something super obvious at all, like the mm-hmm. other big pipes are. Yeah, and I don't think that's coincidence. I don't think that's mm-hmm. accidental. Um, from a business perspective, I think they were they intentionally, and I can't say this with any certainty. There's no, um, I'm looking at the evidence given to me and, and basing an opinion on it. I think it's perfectly designed 
for the underage smoker. Um, mm. It is inconspicuous. It is sleek looking. Even the packaging, it looks, when you buy this product, it looks like you're buying an Apple product. It's very perfect. It's very well designed. Yeah. And and that's the thing, too, is before we get to how, how people will actually get it. But that's the thing is, 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 is the people don't realize this is nicotine. Yes. Uh, this this is a, a drug, an a, addictive substance. And a very high dose of nicotine. So Juul has the highest concentration of nicotine of any um, e-cigarette company, any e-cigarette product on the market right now. So a single cartridge in... Um, of a jewel pot has about a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. Wow. Wow. So how, how, how that's wow. amazing. So what is it doing to a young person? Well, the physical consequences of vaping are still um, under investigation. Really what we have now are short term studies. And that's just simply because it hasn't been around long enough to have done long term studies. But we know what nicotine does, right? There is extensive and long-term research on what nicotine does to the body and to the brain. So um, nicotine causes restriction of the blood vessels, which increases risk of heart attack and stroke, um, increases cell division and tumor growth. So it's cancer causing. Um, and long-term, um, long-term use has been shown for nicotine to be very detrimental to the health. For the vaping itself, um, when compared to cigarettes, it's probably um, less harmful. Um, but what I've been thinking for a long time, you know, of course it's less harmful. We're comparing it to one of the most deadly products that's ever been known right. in human history. Mm -hmm. So just about anything is going to be safer sure, than, than a inhaling cigarette. a big thing of smoke. Yes. Yeah. But for the adolescent, and that's really what we're here to talk about, the adolescent brain is so much more vulnerable, so much more susceptible to that addictive process. So when we introduce something like nicotine, one of the world's most addictive substances, into the adolescent brain, um, our main concern is a lifetime of addiction, right? Because the, it's it happens so quickly um, that the adolescent will become addicted to a sub substance like nicotine. Yeah. And that's really what concerns me. Yeah. And also you point out that it's kind of hard for parents to detect not only the actual uh, mechanisms, uh, but also maybe to detect if their child is actually in the throes of some kind of nicotine addiction. But there are certain things, uh, certain signs you can look for, correct? Sure. And uh, what would those be? Okay. So... The signs of a nicotine addiction, you know, if, you're, if your child, if your middle schooler is suddenly um, experiencing headaches, right? If he's complaining of feeling, um, having a difficult time concentrating. Um, if you find your adolescent is, is sneaking out more often, is, is asking for more time um, to themselves, just seems to be behaving a little bit suspiciously and you can't quite put your finger on what's going on here. Um, you know, it, it's not, that's certainly not um, the only thing that could be going on, um, but it's definitely a possibility. The cartridges themselves um, in the, the device itself, although it's inconspicuous, if you know what you're looking for, you're going to have an easier time um, right. detecting it. So, you know, I know we're on the radio and I can't hold one up for anybody, but if everybody could just, whenever they get a chance, just simply Google the jewel. Um, like I said, it's, it's well known. It's yeah. the most popular product on the market. Yeah, because it, it, it looks just, I mean, it looks absolutely just like anything that would be associated with a computer. And these yeah. days, every kid has mm -hmm. one, a computer yeah. or what have you. Uh, and, and, and also, though, when it comes to charging it, that's what makes it easier, too. You can charge it up with your computer. But, uh, Tony, here's, here's another one. I think that, you know, uh, when we talked about this, a lot of kids are like, suddenly you're like, they, they want to take a walk. It's like, you're going to take a walk? <laughs> you, you, like you never take a walk. Oh no, I just feel like getting some fresh air. Sure, it's yeah. like, like okay. Or where's Johnny in the bathroom again? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff is, uh -huh. is happening because again, it, it, it's it's undetectable, uh, but it's detectable by behaviors, and you can't because you can't smell it. But maybe just just and and of course. It's hard to sometimes detect, too, because what's new about being an adolescent and not being able to concentrate or, you know, so you have to kind of watch out for the fact that it actually what's normal behavior for an adolescent and what's abnormal behavior. But you're talking about things that suddenly they're changing patterns or they're changing approaches to things. Sure. And I think, you know, what we're talking about here is, you know. Um, maybe catching your kid doing it. And that's really not my not my goal. I don't want to I don't want parents just to 
to catch their kids. What yeah. I want what I want to do is be proactive about this thing. Um, we I've never seen anything quite like what's happened with vaping in just a very short period of time. This thing has taken over. So we're we are being reactive, but it's it's really important that we're proactive about it, uh, proactive about it too that we're discussing with our children really the the health consequences, the long-term health consequences um, of this thing, right? It's not this uh, safe alternative. It's not this healthy thing. It's not um, It's not something that we just do. And that's how I hear kids describe it quite often. Um, they describe it as flavored air, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, or that they're smoking water vapor. Neither of these things could be further from the truth. Um, it is nicotine. It is a drug. And we are still um, in the infancy of discovering just what it is doing to our bodies and to our young people's brains. Talking with Tony Tremelli, he is from West County Psychological Associates. And I would suggest that if your school hasn't had uh, this team in, or, or your church, or whatever it happens to be, any kind of place where you know parents of adolescents are, or adolescents are, I would encourage you to get these uh, folks in the door, because it's really super valuable information, not only for kids to have access to but also for parents as well and a mom had called in tony and said the other thing about the jewels being scary is that they they don't know where kids are getting them like i like as a kid can they can they they can buy them on the internet but then again how do they buy them on mm -hmm. the internet without a credit card right. how, how are they getting these things do you okay. know yeah it's a good question so there are there are brick and mortar stores that are selling these products um vape shops and gas stations and tobacco shops that do, are selling the jewels. So that's one place to get them. Um, in St. Louis County and St. Louis City, um, you have to be 21 years old um, to buy nicotine products. I believe in St. Charles County and in Illinois, it's still 18 years old. Um, don't quote me on that because I'm not um, positive about St. Charles County, but I'm, um, that's what I've heard from some of my um, younger clients. But just like a lot of things these days, it's mostly e-commerce. So kids are purchasing these products directly from the Jewels website. Jewel claims on their uh, on their site to have a state of the art age verification process in which they use to um, sell these products. Um, the state of the art process is simply typing in your DOB in your name. Yeah. So yeah. kids are just using other people's names, right? Um, cousins, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and like one client told me um, his mother, right? So he just typed in his mother's name, their address. And use her credit card to buy um, a bulk purchase of jewels, um, and then which can be sold and given to to friends and classmates and right. things like that. So most of the purchasing is done online through Jewel's website. Yeah, and also, and and Jewel, by the way, is spelled J U U L. J U U L. Somebody called in wanted to to know uh, about that, but so it's J U U L, and they have their official site and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, one of the things too, uh, Tony, that, that I was hearing is that is that sometimes there are, especially in school atmospheres where middle schools are tied to high schools, those kinds of things, that enterprising high school students can you know, disseminate them, sell them, do whatever. And that's how sometimes they wind up in the hands of younger people too. Yeah. And that makes sense. Right. I mean, that's nothing new. Yeah. Um, that's been right. going on for a long time. It's just jewels kind of a very easy and oftentimes profitable. Um, yeah. Right. Something for high, older high school students to do. And the benefit here in terms of, of what Tony and the team at West County Psychological Associates do is that again, their, their goal is not to, this isn't a dragnet this is more of just an approach to educate you and, and the kids for that matter in terms of really what this does. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't like a, a big bust here. This is just basically what this does and, and to arm yourself with enough info to protect your family and your people. Exactly. And when we go into schools, you know, it's never, um, in my opinion, been a productive um method of communicating with young people for me to just get up in front of them and lecture them about what they're doing. Right. Um, I hated hearing those things when I was in middle school and high school and kids still hate it now. So instead, what we really have been trying to do and something um, that I have found to be really interesting and effective and educational for everybody is to sit down with small groups of kids and just have a conversation about these things. Um, and that's the way we've been doing it. And I think it's a really great opportunity for, for us to really learn from them, you know, empathize with what they're going through. I think oftentimes 
as adults, our experiences during middle school and high school are so vastly different than the ones ki- the kids are going through now. So to just get down to their level and have a conversation, a non-judgmental conversation about some of these things, I just think it's been a really great way for me um, as a mental health professional um, to reach a lot of kids. Yeah, and peer pressure is nothing new because we've had this when we were kids and, you know, so-and-so, they were smoking and let's mm-hmm. try this because it's mm-hmm. cool and blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with the Jewel, except now you have a lot more expansive social media outreach and people online, you know, it's all over the place. And so the... the, the that's another story, though, because we could talk, you know, on down the line about helicopter parenting and about how kids are actually uh, older than we were when we were in middle school because of their exposure to so many different aspects of social media mm-hmm. and, and the way they in- interact, which is uh, different than what we used to experience. Alan, thanks for calling the show. How are you? You're on with Tony Tremelli. What's up? Yeah. I, um, our, our daughter, we've had, unfortunately, pretty uh, vast experience with the vaping with her and uh what we did was uh we caught her with a couple of these jewel things uh there's kids you know she goes to a pretty well respected public high school which i won't say which school it is um there's kids walking around with backpacks full of the mechanisms as well as the cartridges and so the kids are literally buying them at school you know like drugs yeah um so what we did was we caught her the second time and after that we made her Prove to us that jeweling, which is what they call it, jeweling was beneficial to her and made her present it to us. And if she could present to us a compelling argument that it was healthy, that we'd allow her to do it. How'd she do? Um, well, unfortunately, <laughs> we've gone through a couple of cancer deaths in our family that she's watched. Mm. And the nicotine uh, issue was huge with the cancer. And so the more she researched it, when she presented to us, she actually presented a negative outlook on it. And we think we've nipped it in the butt. Wow. You know, yeah. but, uh, as well as describing, you know, the kids look like total idiots when they're doing it. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, so, uh, you know, just a suggestion, you know, that's how we handled it instead of, you know, riding her all the time and tossing her, you know, throwing yeah. her mattress upside down and everything like that. So, yeah, that's a great, that's a great approach, Alan. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's time consuming. Uh, and, but it's constructive and effective, Definitely. ultimately. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do agree with him on that level, is that you can keep emptying your backpacks out on the kitchen floor or, you know, or uh, doing a, a, a execute a search warrant under their bed or whatever, but but really, truly, the effect is more like, let's let's be more constructive about it. Yeah, I mean, I think going about it like that, you know, while I understand it, it becomes a game of whack-a-mole, right? I mean, it's just um, catching them, taking it, they're going to get another one. I think the really, you know, and your strategy seems very similar to the one we're um, approaching it with, is just to, to really have a conversation, right, um, to talk with these kids. And, right. Your idea, Alan, of having them, um, having your daughter construct an argument, I think was perfect. Yeah. Because it's an impossible <laughs> argument to construct. And I think that was, um, yeah. you knew that before you started. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was, it was wise. It yes. was, a, you know, a, it was a gamble too, but at the same time it it worked. And and that's the other thing, cat and mouse. I mean, you, you, you work with a lot of young kids on a variety of different issues. And cat and mouse sometimes is a game they're more than happy to play with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, even, uh, kind of deep inside, they like the idea of like moving this around and moving that around, mm-hmm. but you're not really addressing the problem. Uh, Jared, what's up? Well, Jared's a respiratory therapist. He's trying to figure out where the nicotine comes from, Tony. Where you, the nicotine comes from? Yeah, is it is it just squirted into that little cartridge? Yeah, so nicotine is one of just the, the few ingredients in the juice, is um, in the liquid, the, okay. e-li- the e-liquid. Um, also called the juice, um, which is vegetable gl- vegetable glycerin, um, flavoring agents, and nicotine. Wow. That's unbelievable. Well, thanks for what you guys are doing. I mean, really, seriously, this is – I think there are a lot of parents and even uh, uh, kids who are basically – once they learn more about this, realize, ooh, mm-hmm. I'm doing that. 
as like and it and it's true. So you guys are doing a great value service to folks out there. So thank you, Tony Tremelli. Appreciate you. Well, I appreciate that, and thanks again for having me. Yeah, on. check it out at West County Psychological Associates. They have a Facebook page too, where you got have a ton of information about this as well we and do. other stuff. At West County Psychological, that's going to be on Facebook for you. WCPASTL dot com is the website. So again, if you've got a school, church, youth group, whatever, and you guys want to get schooled on this or want the kids schooled and or parents schooled, then Tony and his team are out there at West County Psychological Associates, ready to kind of rock it for you. 969-8797-866-455-9797. It's Common Sense Radio. Rob Ray.